somebody's lying. She said it cannot be. Okay, first of all, we have some honorable people here. The members of the three other families, they are honorable people. And I don't want to be political. To politicize the death of my son would be dishonoring to Todd. All I can do, and I did bring my notebook that I carry every year, I've carried these for years, and I'll just read what I said, and then I will let people, whether you're Democrat or Republican or Independent, draw your own conclusions. You wrote this down right after this. This is what I will write down, or I, I wrote down. I gave Hillary a hug and shook her hand, and she said, we are going to have the filmmaker arrested who was responsible for the death of your son. Yeah, um, and I, I remember that evening um, when Todd's body flew in, I was on the phone with my dad, and that was exactly what he was saying. That was the information we had had at the time, and that was what I believed, and I had not had no correspondence um, directly, but through him, and that was that was what we were going on, really, for the first over a month after he passed. What do you feel when you when you hear the congressional investigators say no stand down order was given? That's not that's not how it went down. But it is, despite the testimonials of the guys who fought the fight, and you hear partisans say, "Would you move on? Benghazi's done." Well, I think what you said there about the individuals who actually were on the ground. I really believe that is what holds the most weight. Um, the individuals on the ground, I, no matter what, there's multiple people there who are corroborating, and I would say that there are those multiple people who have identical testimonies on that. What do you think, Charles? Okay. The men on the ground are totally reputable. They risk their lives because of integrity, because of honor. They don't lie. They have no motivation to lie. And even if, okay, look at the facts. Ty and the rest of them would have left immediately mm -hmm. if there had been no stand-down order. That's what they, they would have gone immediately. And that's so, what the three so, guys said. Yes, exactly. And I want to ask you about that, Pat. Those are the facts. They, Oz, Tonto, and Tig said without question they believed that they had been allowed to go when they when the calls came in, when they said, we're all going to die unless somebody gets over here, that they could have saved the life of Ambassador Stevens and your son. I mean, what but kind of accountability do you want to see? I want to see Hillary in jail. It was her department, and she'd been lying, and she turned the whole country into a bunch of liars. It's an extraordinary thing when you think that Charles your son died trying to help Pat's son, Ambassador Stevens, and others, and, and you met some of the CIA agents whose lives he did save at the premiere last night. I've got to go, but I want to ask you, what was that like? It was, it was surreal. It really putting faces and names to real people when these type of things are mentioned on the news so many times, they're nameless faces or faceless names, and you don't really get the human aspect of it, but meeting them face to face, that really, it, it puts it in a whole new light and really shows just the significance of that sacrifice that was made. Um, in the movie, one of the dialogues when they were leaving um, to the annex, it was um, Ty, Ty's character that said, well, this is about the end of our contract work. And the response um, from one of his <coughs> comrades was, well, that's a small price to pay for doing the right thing and being able to live with themselves. And that, that right there is just the true hallmark um, of just the kind of heroes that they were and the men that they were. He's the one who said, none of you has to go, but we're their only chance. Yeah. And they did go. And they paid a high price for their heroism last night, but they saved American lives. Thank you both so much for being here, Pat. God bless. Good luck to you. Thank you for being here. Charles Woods says he actually hopes that this movie will inspire others to serve. And believe it or not, after his son died, he called up the armed forces and tried to enlist yeah, like at 60 years old. Jeremiah is going to medical school. He hopes to take those skills to help our men and women in uniform. Monday night, we have an amazing lineup for you. An hour on the blockbuster movie 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi and how the film could change the 2016 race. Plus, we will show you exclusive behind-the-scenes material with the real-life soldiers, the actors, 
and director Michael Bay, and how together they managed to capture the powerful story of bravery and sacrifice. That's Monday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Coming up next, right here, growing outrage after a federal court rules that 